Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. And today people, today I'm going to be covering the current state of the Pokemon anime and how I think Pokemon Journey should come to a close as we approach the final few episodes of this series. But before we get started today, I want to remind you to like and subscribe to the channel. We're so close to hitting 3,000 subscribers and I'm very grateful for each and every one of you. Also before we get started, I want to leave a quick disclaimer here. About 90% of this video is going to be strongly opinionated. Journeys overall has been a pretty good series, but I'm going to be very highly critical of it throughout this video. Okay, now let's get started. To begin, I'd like to start with a quick recap of the Journeys anime. So right now, we're nearing the climax of the Ash and Go storyline. Ash has just beaten Cynthia in a pretty epic battle and is now headed to the finals to face Leon. And as for Go, I think he's ready to go catch Mew or something. And that's just it. That's the biggest issue in the Pokemon Journeys anime. It's too ambitious. If I told you a Pokemon series was going to have Ash travel to all eight regions, meet up with almost every old travel companion, use Mega Evolution, Z-Moves, and Gigantamax, catch a Dragonite, Gengar, and Lucario, we're gonna show off all his old Pokemon, all while he enters the biggest Pokemon tournament ever, while eventually facing champions like Steven, Leon, and Cynthia. Oh, and also we're gonna introduce a new character that will also be a main character who wants to catch all 700 plus Pokemon with the ultimate goal of catching the most elusive and exclusive Pokemon ever. Yeah, kinda seems like a lot. Okay, so when the whole premise of the Journey's anime was announced, everyone was excited, and expectations were through the roof. People were like, oh, Ash is going to use his dream team with Pokemon like Charizard and Sceptile and he's gonna be unbeatable. But now, let's fast forward to present day. Over the course of three years, Ash has not met up with May, Max, Misty, or some other smaller traveling companions. With respects to his old mons, they were simply turned into move tutors and training dummies. Oh, except for Infernape, who came back to only lose a battle and not activate his blaze ability. But no one was more disrespected than the Kalos crew of the anime. We got Alon and Diantha making their triumphant return, only to get destroyed by plot armor King Leon. And then we have Serena arguably the most beloved female companion of Ash's, who was turned into a 10 second hello and goodbye interaction with Ash. And the worst of them all has gotta be our boy Greninja. He got a scene in the opening that was just him. Everyone thought he was coming back and could possibly be a major character moving forward. But nope, he was just in one episode, was a training dummy for Lucario with some nonsense or a battle bond thing. And in that very episode, we find out that Greninja is far and away stronger than Lucario. So, like, if you're Ash, getting ready for a huge tournament, why on Arceus's green earth would you not use the rare and special bonded Pokemon you have to make you even stronger? I mean, you're entering the biggest tournament ever with seven other champions. Plus, like, why bring Alon back to not have him battle Ash and Greninja again? Like, dude, what? Okay, okay. Now, let's talk about Ash's journey team. His first capture was Dragonite. No, not a Dratini, a full-on Dragonite. This was like episode 8 of the series, and it literally broke the internet. This was pretty special, because this was a pseudo-legendary, but also a Pokemon that wasn't from the newest generation. Something Ash normally never does. Dragonite was originally Ash's ace for this series, and was beating Mega Pokemon, Champion Pokemon, and Sweeping Team. Recently, Dragonite has gotten the same treatment of Ash's other Dragon Pseudo Legendary, Gudra. Starting off like a beast, but then falling off hard. Then there's Gengar, whose battling prowess was pretty much the opposite of Dragonite. It started off weak and was only taking L's, then it learned a Gigantamax, and it's really done some good work for Ash's team in unique ways. A highlight of Gengar's battles is when Ash unexpectedly G-Maxed him against Raihan, and he even ate a freaking Sandstorm attack. Next is Surfetch. Surfetch got a lot cooler as the series went on, and was a pretty surprising capture for Ash. And he did work against Cynthia. So, yeah, Surfetch, he's pretty cool. I like Surfetch. Dracovish is almost as bad as Torkoal. And Pikachu? Pikachu is probably the most OP we have seen ever in a given series. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the most recent battle, Ash vs. Cynthia. I personally thought Cynthia vs. Ash was good. It wasn't great. It didn't have as much of a narrative driving force behind it like battles between 
Ash and Paul, Kukui, or Gary. They tried to make Ash's Lucario mirror Cynthia's Garchomp, which I believe would have worked a lot better if the final match was Mega Lucario versus Mega Garchomp. The writers tried to surprise us with Cynthia Dynamaxing her Togekiss, but it just felt kind of forced and so underwhelming. I really admired the first episode, even though they really had Dragonite become fodder once again, but other than that, I really liked the strategic battle between Cynthia and Ash. Seeing the counter shield come back was awesome. Plus, Pikachu falling so early in such a unique way was awesome and very fresh, but then the other two episodes of the battle didn't really do it for me. I just had a really hard time believing that these new Ash Pokemon like Dracovish can compete with Champion Cynthia's Pokemon. Overall, the Ash vs. Cynthia battle was good. I'd stick it in around the top 8 spot. Okay, now time for my next big discussion point. So as of writing this video, a giant ball just got dropped on us viewers. In the latest preview for the Pokemon Journeys anime, we saw this. It's Leon, almost like he's commanding Eternatus. Now this image has caused the Pokemon community to unsurprisingly freak the fudge out. But after thinking about it for a couple days, and looking around the community for different opinions and takes, I think there's realistically three different scenarios for Eternatus here. Scenario 1. Leon uses Eternatus against Ash. Yes, I know this seems completely insane, especially considering it's technically Go's captured Pokemon. But he is Leon and he seems to get very, very special treatment. If this happens, Ash is in real trouble. R.I.P. I don't think even his dream team could beat Leon's team. Because, I mean, think about it. We've seen trainers use mythicals and lower tiered legendaries like the Lattes or Tapus, but Eternatus is basically a box art legendary. These box art legendaries like Dialga, Palkia, Lugia, etc. seem to be basically OP gods. I really hope the writers aren't pulling a Tobias 2.0 on us. Now for Scenario 2, I think this is somehow related to Go and will not affect Ash and Leon's battle at all. I believe we are going to have a small break before the finals of the Masters 8 tournament. During that time, we'll see Go's storyline wrap up with him likely encountering Mew. I don't know exactly how the pieces will come together here with relation to Eternatus, but I mean, Eternatus is currently Go's biggest capture, so maybe he's going to be used by Go for an upcoming battle or something? Okay, and now for Scenario 3, which honestly I'm the most excited about. We have more Pokemon episodes than we expected in the old Pojo anime. I believe we have enough time for one more arc beyond the Project Mew and Masters 8 finales. Personally, I would love to see a major villain arc to end the series, similar to what we saw close out the XYZ anime. What if we saw something like Chairman Rose teaming up with Giovanni or other past major villains? They could use Eternatus somehow. I don't know. It just seems super suspicious that Eternatus is back. It's gotta be for a reason, guys. So, overall, I'll admit, I'm pretty excited for the Leon vs. Ash finale. I hope so badly that Ash wins this battle because I dislike Leon strictly for how the writers treat him. But if Ash does win this battle, I got no idea what the future will hold for him. I just hate the way the anime has treated Leon. Like, okay, he's strong, but is he three Pokemon stronger than other champions like he was shown in his battle with Diantha? This guy's Rillaboom might just sweep Ash's team if he ain't careful. I really hope to see Ash use either all three gimmicks or bring out some of his old reserves for this final battle. Or better yet, both. Imagine a team with Charizard, Sceptile, Greninja, along with G-Max, Gengar, Mega Lucario, and Z-Move Pikachu. That team will be scary, and honestly might be the only chance Ash has against Leon. Of course, this would make Ash's Dragonite just total fodder for the series, but whatever, it'd be worth it to see this in my opinion. So to tie everything together, Pokemon Journeys, in all, has been an okay series for me. It was just a bit too ambitious for his own good. Like seriously, they're trying to set up Go as this major character, but I have no reason to care about him at all. And don't even get me started on Chloe. The biggest waste of episodes and recap episodes and storylines and time as a whole. Like what has she done? What? Well guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope I was able to enlighten a few of you on what I think makes the Pokemon Journeys anime unique. It's not all bad, just a bit too big for its own good. 
But of course, I'm very interested to hear what your guys' thoughts and opinions are on the series. How would you like to see the series wrapped up before the new Gen 9 anime? Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and have an awesome day.